What's up, everybody? I'm TJ. And I'm Kelsey. And we are the, the Nashville, Nashville Wine Duo. Duo. All right, we ready? <laughs> ready. We're ready for this. Yes. We have arrived. We packed our suitcase this morning. We're in Leapers Fork, Tennessee at this uh, wonderful, beautiful studio, Latitude Studios, correct? Correct. Correct. Michael and Kathy Latanzi are our guests, and they are a power couple. Complete power couple. <laughs> and they <laughs> are so charming, so funny, <laughs> some fun friends that we've made that we're so excited to have on the podcast and talk all things wine and music and y'all and your life. So, um, you want to start? Yeah, with... just a brief kind of backstory. Yeah. So, Michael has been in the music industry for a long time, Very rocking good. in bands and now production, <laughs> producing the whole the whole gamut. Kathy, uh, amazing woman, she's in the wine world now, making some amazing wine. So, we really just wanted to showcase you guys. And you guys live in Tennessee, so we're all about like showcasing and showing love to people that are doing some cool stuff here. So cool. we're happy awesome. to have you guys on the podcast. So thanks for having us. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So it'd be great if you guys could just talk about, I think it'd be even like how you met and yeah. 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 the love story, yeah. Yeah, yeah. how it all started. The condensed you, version. Yeah. yeah. And then how you got into the music industry, where your love from wine comes from. So just, yeah, start, start the Woody, story. Do you want to say how we met? Yep. What do you want to know first about how we met? Yeah, yeah. let's hear the love story. We met at my sister's wedding reception. Reception. She got married in Ojai, California. He's from New York. I'm from Los Angeles. And I was friends with his sister. And See how she told me to tell her story. I know. I'm going to pass the baton. But That's I'm usually getting, how it goes, Michael. I'm getting it going here. Yeah. So I would... Uh, so Lisa and I, his sister Lisa and I were girlfriends, and then she met someone and decided to get married and take it from there. Yeah. <laughs> now I lost my thought. <laughs> so I was working on a record out in California, going back and forth from New York, and I lived in New York. And um, we were recording. We took a break for my brother-in-law was producing this record, and I was engineering it. So he took a break in the middle of this record um, to uh, have his wedding party because they already got married in Ojai and then they were going to have a reception down in Hollywood. They lived in the hills in Beachwood Canyon. So we took a break and we went in there and uh, I was with this drummer, Kenny Aronoff, who's a real famous drummer. He started out with John Cougar and Melissa Etheridge at Smashing Pumpkins and he played on Bon Jovi records. He's unbelievable. He's a bald guy. You might know. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So. I just met him because he played on the record and we became really close. So we're sitting in there. And at that time, I had long hair and I was smoking a cigar and had a baseball hat on. And I was dressed, you know, I had a blazer on, and I, you know, jeans and stuff. I was dressed nice from the top up, maybe, and stuff. So we're talking. And then I didn't say talking because I'm from New York. Huh? See, I got better. We're talking. And me and Kenny. And then she came in the to the party. She just got there. And I saw and I was like, don't let your head swell. I was like, oh my, I was like, I go to Kenny. I was like, who's that? Oh my God. I even remember what she was wearing to the T, like when she came in. And um, what was she wearing? She was wearing this like crushed velvety, it's like dark <laughs> orangey burnt color, right? Yeah, that's right. And she had a- not, she had like these knee high, it wasn't like thigh, but these knee high socks. Okay, this things. was probably 28 years ago so the fashion was definitely different then so yeah but i remember it was yeah. just crazy so i told this kenny something i won't ago. repeat i gave him a little nudge and i said <laughs> and then um <laughs> so she came in and she's sitting around and i was like who's that so i said to my sister like well i didn't say this actually yet so i saw him where everything's going on and then she sat down on a couch and she's facing this way and talking to people. So I kind of, I have no game or anything. I can't say, you know, I'm just like, a little, you know, I won't, I, I'm just don't, I'm not one of these dudes like, hey. So I had this cigar or whatever, and I'm sitting there. So I said to Kenny, I said, come here, you know, like, let's talk over here. And I sat facing the other way, kind of on the arm of the chair, and she was just sitting there. 
so I'm trying to get her attention, like maybe, you know, just whatever. And she kind of looks at me and I look at her and, I, and she's like, you know, like just turns her head. I was like, oh, great. So <laughs> th- I went into the kitchen. I said, I said, who's that girl who just came in here to my sister who, who just got married, my younger sister, Lisa. She's like, what do you mean? I go, the one she's wearing this aren't course thing I just explained. And she goes, oh, yeah, uh, Kathy. I go, Kathy. She goes, oh, you mean Kathy with the body? And I go, because that was her nickname at that time. Again, I stress this was 28 years ago. <laughs> so I said, I think I need to meet her. She's like, no way. I'm not introducing you to her. I go, what do you mean? I think I'd be nice to meet her. She goes, you're too cocky. There's no way. I go, what do you mean cock? I'm too cocky. What are you nuts? I just want to meet her. You know, and she's like, ain't happening. So that night passed. Next day, we're in the studio working. Uh, it was actually... And Encino and Michael, not Michael Jackson's house, but uh, it was Jermaine or Tito Jackson's house, which was a recording studio, which is now called House of Blues Studios. Anyway, so we're recording there, working on this record. So my sister happens to come in with Kathy, and I was like, oh, cool, you know, and uh, but nothing to do with me. So I have this young assistant, <laughs> this youngest, younger assistant who I call him like a coat on a hanger. He's this little skinny guy with long hair, and uh, his name was Howard, and uh, if you're listening, sorry. And, yeah, uh, I don't know that we should mention <laughs> no, that. No, he's, he's not going to hear this. And he anyway, lives in cares. Nashville. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Howard? <laughs> I thought you said he lived in no, Nashville. No, he lives in L.A. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk about Howard. <laughs> this dude. So anyway, after that, Lisa introduces my sister. You know, I say hey to her because I ne- finally met her at the party and just said three things like hey nothing and um and then they leave and the next thing howard tells me oh cool i'm gonna go out on a date with your sister's friend i was like what oh dang yeah so (laughs) i go what are you talking about he's like yeah your sister just uh you know we were talking because they were outside in the lounge or something when me and dave were working and uh i said oh cool i'm like that's pretty screwed up you know i'm thinking that's ridiculous so (laughs) I'm like I like this girl, and my sister's hooking her up with my assistant with the coat hanger. Yeah, with the with coat Howard. hanger. Howard the hanger. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, uh, next day he comes in. I was like, "So how's your date? How'd your date go?" He goes, "Well, it was pretty boring." I go, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Eh, you know, we took a dro- we drove up to Santa Barbara, and all she wanted to do was have small talk." I go, what do you think you're going to do in that car? The you just guy. Met the what guy. am I supposed to talk about? You idiot. Was, what an idiot. But I was glad because he was like, eh, because he said he was like, like a, yeah, he's it like was a, not a, this guy was like a wet rag. He's just like, you know, so, it was not a good match. So <laughs> then I was still staying in LA because I lived in New York. So I would stay at my sister's house, which I fell in love with that area, which later on I wound up moving to. But anyway, so I would cross paths every now and then. And even one time we were on the 101 driving home. Uh, me and Dave from work and I see my sister just with Kathy going the other way and I don't even know how I even saw them but on the 101 just so the timing was just weird I, like she'd always kind of be there just mm. coincidentally and uh I asked my sister again I was like well she's like you're too cocky I ain't doing it. you know and I'm gonna introduce you to my girlfriend I said I'm and I was just like single you know for a bit and I was like I don't get the big deal to make a long story short, yeah, it's it's a bring it in. Eventually, <laughs> eventually, we're out of a uh, video time. Eventually, um, we went out just as friends because she was bored and I was bored. It's like, hey, let's go Can out. Can I just cut yeah, in? Go ahead. So we'd go out in groups. The group, groups kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and then pretty soon it was just he and I. And then I went to Lisa and said, "Hey, I think I kind of like your brother." And she's like, "Okay, if you like him, then let's let's make it." But happened. she never, she never told me. Still. But I never told him. No, and she oh. never told me. So anyway, we went out one night just as friends. After, like she said, the groups and by default, we, you know, in her brain, we're stuck together. And I was happy. It's like, oh, good. These because the two, this, her best friend and her boyfriend were supposed to meet us at this bar in L.A. And they wound up they couldn't come. So it was just us, unless I was just a plant. I'm finding out maybe and just wanted me alone with me. Um, no. Anyway, no. so we went to this. <laughs> we went to the, no, uh, no. So we went to this bar, and a, after we left, we just. We walk into the parking lot and we naturally just held hands. It was weird. Like, and in the bar, I remember what she was wearing that night too, which we don't have to get into, but she 
I was drinking shots of Jack and then she had shots of Jack and I was like, wow, she even has could drink shots of Jack. That's pretty cool. And then she later on, she told me, yeah, I told your sister I liked you. I was like, are you kidding me? And she wouldn't, my sister never told me. I said, well, what about when we, I, was that the first time you walked in and I was sitting on the couch? She goes, ah, you're working the room with your New York mug. She goes, you had a New York <laughs> mug. I go, Still does. I said, what do you mean work in the room? I go, it's called having a personality. She's like, yeah, work in the room. So, and that was how we met. And, and then we saw each other like every day and had a cross country he conversation. He was still living in New York. So we were uh, dating by coastal Long distance. for okay. probably a year or two before he moved out to the West Coast. And then we cohabitated and the rest is history. Meanwhile, the question was, so how did you meet? Yeah. He was expecting like, oh, so we met at Trader Joe's. Like <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> no, we no. met at the bank. It was good. I liked, <laughs> and, I liked the detailed story. Now, if, and, yeah, we if, could if edit it. Puts, it. If, no, it puts you in the it puts you in the situation. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. So that was so it's been twenty eight years. Uh, she knows uh, better than me on that. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We'll wow. be this year we'll be married twenty four, but together twenty eight. We renewed our vows at ten years. Yeah. But not at cool. twenty. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it means we it means we hate each other now. So, uh, um, anyway. what what brought y'all to Nashville? Uh, music. Um, Mike had his accident out in Los Angeles, two thousand six, where he fell off a cliff and I was riding a mountain bike, and paralyzed, and um, we were looking to get out of Los Angeles, so we moved to Sedona, Arizona first. And I used to go there on vacation with my family all the time. So I took Mike a couple of times before the accident and we decided that would be an amazing place for him to get his head together and to heal somewhat and just figure out what was next for us. So we moved out of LA, moved to Sedona. And Kathy used to work at ICM, which is International Creative Management. Yeah, I, like, I was at like an CAA. agency out there. She was there for 10 years. And just to go from Hollywood to Beverly Hills to work six miles, it would take an hour and 10 minutes one way. It was hard. And she did that for 10 years Jeez. in the morning and at night. Yeah. She, she was... used to call me on the phone. I have I had a recording studio in the house. So when I'm working. She'd call me up on her way home and I'd hear, are you, what are you kidding? Stop. Oh, oh, he's going <laughs> to back into me. Hey, you idiot. Shut. And I'm, I'm like, because I, I go, Kath, don't call me. You're stressing me out. He's home. <laughs> Relax. But I'm stressing him out. Yeah. Because of the car ride, you know, and she's like, one, I'm never forget one guy was like at a red light and backing. And she had this little Mercedes and this. I heard, I'll never forget this one truck was like, I don't really just back, back put it in reverse and backing up. And she's like, oh my, like, it's just people are nuts. People so, are nuts out there. So I actually got out, I got out of my car. I was yelling at the guy because road rage out there is your everyday occurrence. So right. there's no fear. You now get you out, get shot. Though, now you get shot. Back but then. back then you could, you know, I got out and I'm like, what do you know? You don't see that. Blah, blah, blah. Like I'm screaming at this so guy. So she did that for 10 years. I so did it like, for 10 years. Enough. It's and like, let's so get out this of happened to him and we decided we needed to get out of this city. This is ridiculous. So we went to Sedona for four years and kind of got our mental health back together. And then Mike said he wanted to get back into the music industry um, at the level that he was in Los Angeles, but we didn't want to go back to LA. He didn't want to go to New York where he's from. So pretty much. I wanted to go back to LA actually. Threw a dart at the And she map. hates, she doesn't like it there because she's from there. And, and I was like, Maybe we're going to have to have a fight over this because I need to be in L.A. We could have had a fight. We still wouldn't be in L.A. But, <laughs> so I started looking at houses in L.A., not telling her. I figured, well, I have a fight till I find the house. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then I, no way. for some reason, I started looking in Nashville. I don't know why. And I saw this beautiful aerial shot of like a house with a 5,000 square foot studio and a 5,000 square foot house. And it looked like Michael Jackson or somebody should be living there. And, and I was like, oh, I can't probably never be able to afford this place. So I looked and it was in Gallatin at the time, but it said Nashville, which I knew nothing about Tennessee. And then I found out the house was, I thought it was gonna be like 10 million, whatever. And it was like only, not only, but it was like a million something. I was like, crazy. That's ridiculous. Well, you're used to like the LA price, like that kind of prices. So you, yeah. you were probably like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, that's crazy. So anyway, I just put it out of my brain. And then Kathy would come in to me and said, look, uh, I was working with Chicago at the time. And, uh, and the Doobie Brothers, I was mixing something for them. Um, like how I just dropped that name. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was working with Chicago. And, uh, <laughs> and um, the Doobie Brothers, and, and and they just had left the, one of the Chicago dudes. And Kathy said, look, Chicago, they're going to, we should go to Tennessee. And I was like, 
Tennessee, like that. Look, Tennessee, <laughs> what you nuts? Me in Tennessee, New York, Tennessee. I don't think. And she's like, I'm like, I don't do country music. And she's like, look, um, Chicago is going there after you to work on an album with uh, Phil Ramone before he passed away. And then she's like, look, and this magazine chairs going there to do a record and Justin Bieber and all these different people. So I was like, if she did all this for me, she was like my caregiver when the accident happened. I couldn't, you know, walk, obviously. I couldn't even get dressed. She used to have to dress me and went through some real crazy stuff that she didn't sign on for, you know, when we got married. And I was like, if that's all she wants, you know, to not be in L.A., I was like, you know, let's let me do that. And that's how we wound up. So we looked at houses for what a year and a half oh no we looked at 74 houses over the course of two years 74 i kept count only because we had to have the this, studio and a house you know that was yeah. the thing so. this place was the fourth place that we looked at and we left it went back to sedona kept looking kept flying in and out in and out and finally um this house was off the market but we got in contact with the owner who actually built the house he was also the owner lived here, knocked on the door and said, Hey, still want to sell your house. And the reason we didn't buy it is because there was no studio or nope. no extension we wanted to put on. It was just a house. So there was nowhere to put a studio. And that's why we, you know, we passed, passed on, on it. it initially. And then he said, he built a house. We found out it's like, Hey, could you build, I designed this studio. And I said, could you build this for X amount of dollars and put an addition on the other side? And he goes, well, I could actually do it for like a hundred thousand less. I was like, who says that? Right. You know, that's how nice people John. are. John. Yeah. No, but that imagine like, yeah, oh yeah, no, hundred grand. Yeah, I could do it for that. But he just like, I was like, wow. So, you know, he. That's how we wound up coming back to this house and building it. Yeah. And believe me, I went to these seventy-four houses. I would because of the wheelchair, I would have to go up. He was in the wheelchair. The steps. On I had my a cast butt. on my leg because yeah. I had a bad the joke had knee was, surgery. We, I had one good leg between us. That was, that the, was joke. the joke. Like, we have one good leg between <laughs> us. <laughs> so, it was pathetic. I would have to pop up the stairs. Yeah, I forgot about that. I have to hop up the stairs and if he, he says, is it worth me coming up? And if the answer was yes, he'd get out of his chair and go up the stair on, on butt. his butt one stair at a time. Wow. And then get back in the chair. It was exhausting. <laughs> but I did that I did that for a bunch of the house, like probably 30 of them in, in I'd go up every one, and then finally I was like, you know, I had to go up. Tell me it's worth just, it. You don't Take realize pictures. when you get to the front of the house, there's always steps to get to the front door. Like boom, boom, boom. And then you get in the house and to go upstairs, you know, and yeah. finally I was, that's when I said, you know what, go in, and if it's worth looking at, I'll come out because it's ridic <laughs> this ridiculous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then we wound up But we've been this. here 13, this is our 13th summer that we've been here. You like it? I like it. I do. I finally love it. And I did not like it at all. I just hated Tennessee. I was like, <laughs> but I liked it. I liked it up here. Did you get that? Yeah. yeah. I like, I love the oh, house. Boy. I love Leaper's Fork. We fell in love with, and I loved the house, but I just like, but like she says, if I'm in New York, I want to be in LA. And if I'm in LA, ugh, I hate LA. I want to be in New York. So if I moved to LA, I would have been like, oh. When you never leave the house. What? Where do, yeah. Why do you care where the house is at? Yeah, I'm just saying. So, but now I actually <laughs> love it. And, uh, you know. Aren't uh, you glad you asked all that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I am. How long did it take to build the studio? It took a year total because we wound up. Maybe a little longer, actually. About, because we wound up putting the studio, built the, built the studio, and we put an addition on the other side of the house, like okay. a three car garage. We moved out and up. So it was a significant amount of more, you know, stuff to build. So, we did it at the same time and it was like two kind of different crews and then they kind of merged into one doing this side and that side of the house so that's what took a year otherwise this would have been a little and faster. we lived through it we lived here through the whole thing never through the winter oh. when they had half our wall down it was nothing but plastic and it was in the middle of winter oh my gosh i don't recommend it to anybody <laughs> well driving up that hill uh driveway's stupid the it's a little it's a little like <laughs> treacherous you're like yeah. it's, it's, it's like a oh lose my gosh. it's like a lose in but the then winter. once you're up here it doesn't even feel like you're really on this huge hill but you are you are but yeah. when once we drive up to the front you're like do we even just go up a hill yeah it's kind of crazy but buttons out but yeah in the winter when it freezes up it's like a luge course yeah. going down. So we just hunker down That's up why, here. And when I saw this house, because what I used to do was go on the internet back in Sedona and look for houses in Nashville or whatever. And then I realized we stayed at the Lowe's because I didn't know anything about Nashville. I figured we're downtown at the Lowe's. And it became like family, the people there. We were there so much. And I wanted to know how far each like Mount Juliet is or Hermitage yeah, or, sure, you know, from, wherever. from Nashville. 
Franklin, Brentwood or whatever. Uh, so when we saw this house, we got lucky because the pictures were terrible, which was good because like you said, you don't know you're up this big hill. Mm -hmm. It looked like the picture he did was just of the steps looking at the house. So it looked like it was right on a road, like kind of West Haven, the way the houses are there, which are beautiful. But right. anyway, it looked like it was just like the road and the house. And it's like, I don't want to live on this road, which was actually the driveway. Right. And, and nobody ever would think it's up this big, beautiful hill once you get up here. And that's why I think it sat on the market and was on and off and no one bothered to come because lucky for us, the pictures were just didn't do it justice. And right. then, then you come up here, it's like, oh my God. Anyway. Very cool. Well, okay. why don't you, Kathy, talk about this wine? We could pour some of this wine and yeah. tell us how you got involved with this wine and what you're making and what you're doing and all that. Great. Um, here, you do the honors. Okay. Um, actually, I got into wine because of Mike's brother-in-law, Dave, out in Los Angeles. He was the wine connoisseur. Oh. He knew all about it. And um, I would go once we decided we got along, I'd go over there and hang out and he would pour wine. And I just, I got into it before that I was, you know, drinking cocktails and rum and Cokes and all that stuff. But then he got me hooked on it and all I could afford was the really rancid stuff. And, um, Dave would go down and buy the expensive $75 bottles of wine at Beachwood market. And, uh, so that's what got me hooked Perfect. for sure. And, um, as far as making it, I just started this maybe five or six years ago. I drank a lot of wine. I thought, why am I not making money at this? Why, why am I not doing this for, uh, you know, some kind of extra moolah, so to speak? So um, my first wine was therapy, and I like a nice, heavy, thick, chewy, I don't know any of the proper wine terminology, but I do know what I like and what tastes good. And so I always go for the heavier reds when I go red. And this, I decided to do a petite Syrah and I found this amazing vineyard out in Napa and they were willing to work with small time Kathy, you know, making her production one barrel at a time, which is really all I wanted to do was a little at a time. And when I sold a barrel next time, I'll make two. When I sell two, I'll make three, you know, and so on and so on. And um, started with therapy back in 2018. Actually, I think it was in March where I first got the first um, samples. And I flew out there and started to blend with the winemaker. And we came up with, with this. I think it's special. This is still the most special one. And um, it's the first one and the most special. And that kind of started it out for me. And then after that, I went into the rosé. And just recently, the new one that you guys are going to taste today is the Truth Serum, which is the Old Vine Zen. And it's all from the same region, Lodi, Napa Valley. Yeah, I saw you post this on your Instagram, and I was all excited. Yeah. I was like, man, I got to try that. And that's kind of how the podcast, you know, I was like, man, we got to get you on the show and talk about these awesome wines. Because we've tried therapy before yeah. and Hissy Fit. And they're phenomenal wines. Yeah. And I mean, then we, we walked knew. away being like, oh my gosh, yeah. that one is so good. <laughs> really just amazing stuff. And Thank you have you. a you have a really good palate. Um so what do you think? Lovely. I like the smell. Yeah, no, it's really, 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 really good. And the old vines in, um, the vines that, that these grapes come from are about a hundred years old. So wow. it really is an old vine zen, and it compares to the primitivo grape in the Puglia, Puglia region mm -hmm. in Italy. It's identical. Yeah. And in fact, they brought uh, the Zinfandel grape over mm, 1830, like in the early 1800s to uh, California. But before that, it was only in Italy and Croatia. So it, it's a very, actually very rare considering. I love your labels too. Mm -hmm. They kind of have a rock and roll kind of vibe to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Is that was that kind of it's planned? It's planned because he I used his lettering. We decided to to kind of simpatico the whole tie in the studio the and the music. Font. Yeah. The same font. So we decided to keep it in the family. Like even looking at Truth Serum closer, I'm like, man, it's got a rock and roll feel to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> I like Appreciate the way the bottle it. came out on this one a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, doing this journey, like even like what we do, so many musicians and music people love wine, mm -hmm. 
you know, and, and the yeah. more you find out, it's like, wow, there really is like a, a wine community within the music industry. Yeah. And well, and one thing we've talked about a lot is we feel like a lot like music, like wine really brings people together, you know, and music does that too. It's like all people can hear it. And even if you are all different, you can kind of come together and listen to the song and have that, and, you know, and wines like that too. So, you know, they kind of go hand in hand in a lot of ways. Yeah. Food, wine, music, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you're exactly. sitting at a place. You remember what song was on the radio when you were sitting off drinking a bottle of wine, looking yeah. at the cliff eating shakuri or whatever Memories, right? yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah absolutely you know they all kind of play together so well i absolutely love this wine it's delicious mm -hmm. you need to taste it with a little okay. charcuterie it oh, brings don't. out the flavors don't twist our arm mm. <laughs> what kind of cheese is this you know this is an irish cheddar and it goes so well with the old vine den okay it complements it perfection i remember last time we were here you like had these like little italian like crackers or something oh i yeah. never i'd never tried those before and I was like, oh, my God, those are like a game changer. Yeah. They're like these like fresh. Made I mean, you can find them anywhere, I'm sure. I remember you. You love those. Yeah. Yeah. Those well, you're an, you're an entertainer. <laughs> they were the little, I, I don't remember the exact name, but they, they're shaped in a little S. And your cousin Rosie from Italy sent a bunch of them when we lived in Sedona. And mm -hmm. there's an Italian grocery store down in Nashville that I was down there with um, Wendy and found them. Mm. But I haven't been back in a while, but I should go down there and get them. Delicious. I always thought Zinfandel's. I don't. I'm not a wine guy. Where like just clear or more like the rosé looking. Yeah, so it, I never it's saw definitely a Zinfandel lighter. Like dark. Like, oh yeah, so there's white Zin, which was kind of popular back. I white think Zin. probably the 80s or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. what a lot of people think rosé is. Is they think rosé sweet, but which I mean, you know, it can. I be. guess it can be, but yeah. traditionally, rosés are. It's a you know, red wine. Dry. Dry. So. Yeah. I could even drink this, and I don't drink wine. What do you think? Taste it with you some like meat. It? I just did. I just did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't like – I'm not a wine guy. As he takes a sip of wine and likes <laughs> no. it. He's maybe, like, this is good. Maybe I'm getting buzzed. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, I have won a couple people over that wouldn't drink wine at all, and now they're buying wine for me like every week. Especially yeah. the more you sip it, it just keeps tasting better and better. You want to take more sips. You want to go back and have another sip. That's crazy. Yeah. No, this is a wow. wonderful job, Kathy. Thank this you. A, yeah, incredible wine. Very, very good. It goes so good with Italian food. I can't even – pizza and red sauces. and that It really good. brings out the, the flavors of the food, and the food brings out the flavors in the wine. It's so good. Mm. I'm loving this. I love these glasses, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's actually important to have certain glasses. The right glass. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. The darker the wine, the bigger the glass, so it can – Breathe. Breathe and get the oxygen in there. And this one, it's higher in alcohol, you can tell. Oh, yeah. 15.2%. This will get you schnockered. I feel like uh, <laughs> Zins are usually like that, though. Mm -hmm. Especially California Zins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is right on the Lodi uh, side of Napa, um, where the, I can never pronounce the river, but it's the Mokalune River that runs right through Lodi. And the banks of the, of the river have these amazing old vines, these Zins. And that's where I went this time. I feel like Lodi's really been kind of taken off too. Like in the past like eight years or something, it's become like a bigger like wine area. It's than a it big was region. Before. It's one of my favorites. Um, second, I mean, Napa, you can't go wrong with Napa, but Lodi has, has some good stuff. Mm -hmm. They're really making a name for themselves, even in other countries. Like over in Greece, if you tell them you've got a wine from Lodi, they're really, really? Oh, it's a, they're really yes. getting on the map what's on the agenda on the wine front are you looking at doing some other kind of varietals what's the game plan i might try a white wine next time mm -hmm. i'm not a white wine drinker but i think if i added that to the arsenal that would kind of round it out nicely and if i'm gonna do a white wine i'd probably and i'm gonna i don't even know how to say it correctly um is it a vognier wagner Oh, Viognier. That's Viognier. it. Yeah. I, I only reason why I, I go in that direction because I've noticed that anytime I've had that kind of wine, it's very buttery mm -hmm. and thick, much like the rest of the stuff that I make. So yeah. I would want something not as crisp. I don't like crisp. Mm. So I would go something very yummy and vanilla-y and buttery. buttery. And, yeah. I feel like that totally makes sense. And I like the idea of doing a Viognier <laughs> over a shard. Because yeah. everyone does a shard. And Viognier is kind of unique and it's different. It's special. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
going off of the, your palate and everything, you like full bodied wines. I mean, Absolutely. you like a good mouthfeel. You yep. like, yeah, that richness, that, that full body, silk, that, the silky yeah. after yeah. If, if it bites me in the back, I'm like, I can't do this. What about Pinot? What kind of wine is that? Pinot's good. Pinot you Noir. Yeah. I would do a Pinot Noir. Is that like a rare grape or something? What I've heard or no? No. Or delicate or something? They're delicate. They're they are delicate. Yeah. That is true. Delicate, I, finicky. Yeah. I learned yeah. that from that movie with, uh, I think it's called Sideways or something. Yeah. yeah. That's why everyone stopped drinking Merlot. Right. Merlot is like yeah, a Merlot starter is like wine. When, it's a starter wine. Everyone yeah. starts with Merlot. Nobody, and, I haven't heard anybody drink Merlot since I've been here at all, ever. No, that's, it's because of that movie. Is it? Yeah. Most people would always have Merlot. It was the thing, you know, or uh -huh. Cab or Merlot. That's the names, I buzzwords that I know from yeah. wine. And I would like to do a Cab someday, too. But ooh. I think... I think I've got the dark red covered. I might people drink I white. Might a do lot of a people. white. Wine. If you did a white with this arsenal, like mm -hmm. yeah, that would round it out nicely. I think. So I, think. Too. I do feel like your wines are also like very crowd pleasing too. Like they're not, but they're not because sometimes when you get these fuller body big reds, they can be um, kind of too jammy or fruit like fruity, and these are not like that. So they they're rounded out really nice with like the tannin and the structure in them. So you get this big full body, but you're not getting like a jam jam. Thing going on in your mouth, which mm -hmm. I like. I, I've talked about this a lot. I don't like really jammy or fruity, but these are wines that I feel like you could give to like someone that, you know, even you, you just said, you're like, I'm not a wine drinker, yeah. but I really like this. So I think these are the kind of wines where you could give them to anybody or you could try it and you'd like it. Don't you? Oh, 100%. And I like wine that you can drink on its own. You don't have to have food with it because yeah. some wines you do need to pair with food, but sometimes you just want a glass of wine and not have to eat and you yeah. know, like round it out. And I think all of these are very drinkable on their own. Exactly. I would totally Well, when we that. first came over here, I don't know, it was like a year ago or two years ago, mm -hmm. and you started off with the Petit Syrah. We love Petit Syrah. And I was, you usually don't see a lot of Petit no, Syrah, you know? So that you started out of the gate with a Petit Syrah that's unbelievable. It's, it's a really a great wine. And then yeah, I've just been really impressed with your palate and like what you're doing. Thank so you. we're going to tag Kathy in this podcast so you can reach out to her and ask her questions about her wine. Mm -hmm. But seriously, you need to try these wines because mm. they are unbelievable and she's doing a cool thing. So and she's a local lady, a local, local Tennessean now. Oh, and I oh. deliver. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. And then we wanna, we wanna so, yeah, questions. so we want to talk about Latitude Studios, too, the the monster that you've created here. It's a beautiful yeah. studio. So who all artist wise have you worked with over your, well, he's your probably long got too career? Many to go on. Well, I don't want the whole yeah. list. I mean, just key names. And by the way, you said Chicago, right? Yeah. That was in Sedona. So I get referred to as the, the young looking Peter Cetera. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. my claim to fame. Start, so, yeah, you, should, you know, that's great. I got to hear you sing <laughs> I now. I can see that. Now, belt I see that. Out, TJ, come For on. sure. TJ you don't Cetera. want me to belt it out. <laughs> TJ Cetera. <laughs> TJ Cetera. <laughs> Saturday. No, he sang all the high stuff. In the, in the, Ooh, all in the, the love group. songs, yeah. And the high stuff. Yeah. Like, and also all the Karate Kid songs. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> I am a <the> man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he does this like. like no, he does <laughs> the hand <laughs> gestures too. That's, see, that's why when <laughs> I was like. I had a record deal I was talking to you guys about earlier before we started on here on MCA. And I, that's one thing I was telling you guys before how I was a stiff when I was on camera. I had a big record deal and a top 10 record and was on TV. I was like, <laughs> I couldn't move. And then you got like Peter Cetera. I was never one of these dudes with the. Yeah. yeah. And then you got the Bon Jovi hands right. when he's singing with his Bon Jovi hands and stuff. So I, I just, that wasn't me, but you'd probably be good at it. <laughs> Yeah. I got good hand motion. Maybe we gotta he, get you. A hand, we gotta, a hand uh, we gotta get him in here and do a, a couple of tunes. See, like New York, I'm from Chicago, so you talk oh, with your cool. hands a lot. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. think that's where it kind of starts. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even yeah. realize that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Where are you from? Missy? I'm from Michigan. Cool. I was born there. Wait, Wait we're the ones doing the interviewing here, not you. <laughs> yeah. Know your know your place, <laughs> man. I have a control <laughs> issue. I have an issue with control. I lived in Colorado for ten years and then moved here. Miss Gelman, I call her. Yeah. Behind the scenes, from yeah. like the, she snaps her finger, from, expects uh, everything to happen. Ka Ka it's Kathy and Regis, and she's yeah. it's like TJ and uh, it's, Gelman. It's, it's Gelman's world. We're wind just it living up. Let's in go. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wind it up. He's taking too long with his cable. She's like, wind it up. Come on, let's go. But uh, no, Chicago. Yeah, I was never one of those hand dudes. But uh, so, whoever had in here, the funny thing is, when I built the studio here, 
I, I actually had a man crush on like Keith Urban, believe it or not. Like before I moved here, I, I just loved his music. It wasn't really country, not that, you know, country's cool too, but it was, it was, I just dug it cause it was really well done and produced. And Dan Huff, who we, we wound up knowing and Kathy kind of became friendly with his wife. Um, he was an amazing producer out here and, and, and I was envious of what he was doing with Keith Urban stuff. So I figured if I drop a house, cause Keith lived in Leaper's Fork. And I figured if I drop a house, like the Wizard of Oz on the witch when it landed on her in Leaper's Fork, boom, like, hey, maybe I'll get to work with Keith uh, Urban. But it turned out the first thing I did, I had Larry Strickland come by because uh, he was Naomi Judge before she passed away, his husband. and. He uh, was really friendly and it's a really tight knit community here. Everyone becomes like family because it's small. So Naomi and Larry uh, used to invite us to their house for like uh, Christmas Eve and Thanksgiving and stuff like that. So Larry's a 74 year old, really good looking guy. He used to be in Elvis Presley's band. He was one of his background singers right up until when Elvis passed. He's the baritone, right? Yeah. Oh, cool. Low voice. He did the, the, the bass stuff and mm -hmm. um, we're not quite bass, but so we became friendly and Larry was in here one day and he's like, uh, he's got a voice like this. He's like, <laughs> you need to meet Dave, uh, Dave Mustaine. And I was like, from Megadeth? They, yeah. Uh, I think you guys would hit. I'm like, there's this church guy, you know, you know, really, you know, just the perfect gentleman. By the book. Yeah. yeah. Everyone would like, would want to grow up and be like Larry. And it's like, Dave from Megadeth, you want me to meet him? Like, what are you nuts? And I'm, I'm thinking of Keith Urban. And the next thing, this church guy's talking about, you know, uh, Dave Mustaine. So, like, yeah, that'd be great. So uh, he said, great, I'll, uh, I'll set it up and you guys will meet. So I get a call. They're going to be here in two, you know, come to visit me. And, and then I was like, cool. So the next day I'm all, you know, I didn't know anything about Megadeth. She, I knew, of course, who they were, but she knew more about them in her little Sunset Strip, Poison Days, and and uh, you know, Bodley Crew and all that stuff. So she's Kathy like, the body, yeah, Kathy yeah, with yeah. the body. Yeah, yeah. Twenty eight years ago, <laughs> you know, it's funny. We used to call her her father, Daddy Just call with the me body. Now my nickname is Twenty Eight Years Ago. <laughs> when her dad was, you a, still look great. When her dad was. was before his dad passed, the you know back yeah, my then poor father we called him. it we called him Daddy, Daddy with, with the, the body. body. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, real quick story. So Megadeth, so of course they don't come and they cancel. And I didn't know how big they were. I knew they were big enough, but I'm thinking Metallica, and I'm thinking, all right. All I knew about Dave was um, what I heard on VH1 and all the video shows. Like, oh, he's, you know, I'm figuring he's not going to be a pleasant guy to meet, to put it mildly. I'm, and I'm, you know, whatever. I'll meet him. So that didn't come to fruition. And then later on, he's like, Oh, Dave's back in town. He wants to meet you. I was like, all right, great. So he came and me and Dave hit it off and we had like this bromance going and, um, and he turned out to be what an amazing, sweet guy, big heart, amazing guy. And Kathy became friends with his wife. Well, Pam and I went to the Leaper Spork wine tasting and we met, that's how we met. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Remember? Oh yeah. yes, I do. That was that's how it all started. Like two, two and a half years and ago, half years three years ago. ago. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So I remember she's telling me about you guys with yeah. the, uh, down the street. And then street. He Heidi, hairdresser Heidi, knows them too. That's yeah. And it was just it all comes yeah. connected. Everybody so knows cool. you. <laughs> And we all know uh, Kevin Bacon, by the way. So yeah. it all is like Kevin That's Bacon. Right. Six degrees. <laughs> seven degrees. Yes. Yeah, six or seven. Seven and a half degrees. <laughs> so anyway, long story short. So uh, Megadeth and me and Dave hit it off. And uh, and so Megadeth, go figure, in Nashville, thrash. My first big thing in here was thrash metal. Uh, not my little boy, uh, Keith Urban. So, um, and as the time passed, I wound up having, uh, you know, Tanya Tucker, who's great. She's got a, uh, her tequila, uh, brand I was telling you about. She's, she's, she's like amazing. She's like one of the guys we always have a blast. Um, and then, so DMX before he passed yeah. away, did his last album in here. He was in here for three months, right? When COVID hit, when it was the point where everyone had to start wearing masks, he it was, was a trip. it was that new. And he was just a sweetheart yeah, of a guy sweet man. Mm -hmm. and she and him really hit it off. Great. So, I mean, just all different genres like you know megadeth to dmx you know to country uh, uh carrie underwood and jason aldean uh, if i didn't love you they had a duet did some of the vocals in here and stuff and you know um so uh, hunter hayes just a whole bunch of Thompson tell them Square. how you got into music to begin with you tell my agent 
ratting me out? Yeah. <laughs> when I was four years old, my parents took me to see the Beatles in New York, Shea Stadium. So, wow. was, and that wasn't that their first uh, America? Yeah, it was when debut? they came. When so they the came Beatles home. at Shea Stadium. Yeah. The first I was, time they were in America was, performing, he got to see. I them. was four years old, and I still remember it to this day. And that's why I do music. It's stuck in my little Isn't brain. Isn't that crazy? Wow. And uh, unbelievable. That's yeah. like a once in a lifetime kind of thing. I still remember it literally. All I saw was this, because was, everyone was just screaming. Didn't hear one girls thing. Girls were music. fainting and all that stuff. Yeah, my dad. I asked him like, "What's that stuff they're putting under the girls' noses?" Because they were fainting. It was like smelling salts back then to wow. wake them up, and they were carrying girls out. They just were fainting, and I'll never forget it. And then Have I actually, you ever fainted over a music artist? No, me neither. Mm -mm. And then I met. Just checking. Then I met this, <laughs> and also I met the Stones the same night, which. And, you know, to be as honest as I can with the story, they were in the marina on a boat. My dad worked for Channel 5 back then before there was all networks, before it became Fox. It was WNEW TV because there's only like NBC, ABC and CBS. Yeah. Um, and so so he had con connections with a bunch of things. And I went on this boat and in the back of this boat, there was curtains and you open them up and the Rolling Stones were there and they were a brand new band. Was coming that the to same America. night? Yes. I didn't know that. And they were there to see the Beatles. And um, I here. don't, Mick Jagger was there. I don't remember. I'd be lying. I just remember Brian Jones because I said to my mom or well, my dad, I said, why does that man look like George Washington? Because he had a haircut, <laughs> you know, like that. <laughs> so I remember Brian Jones of all things. I was four years old. And wow. then I just stuck with me i taught myself how to play the guitar my sister actually played in folk mass and she showed me like a few chords so i'd sit in my room like you know like a minor which is easy, e and then when i get to c it'd be like uh, you know it was really and i just till i was able to play and that was that so that's how that started very cool Man. yeah and what year was that i'm not saying <laughs> 1912. <laughs> And I know you have a story about that board, that beautiful board that's behind yeah, you. Yeah, that mixing board. Um, you can want to move the chairs? Just no. Go, all right, don't. <laughs> I'd, oh, get, no. I'd get up, but I can't. So, um, Yeah, on that board, it's very hard to find those boards. It's, pro it's a Neve, it's called, an 8078. And there's probably about, I don't know, maybe 15, 12 to 20, 15, something like that left in the world. Different from the 70s, late 70s, and um, on that very board, Michael Jackson did Dangerous and Bad, then Chili Peppers, Foo Fighters, Oasis, Tom Petty, The Stones, you know, and Madonna, too, right? Yeah, Madonna, Prince actually did some work when he was in LA, Cheryl Crow, Dolly Parton. Yes, wow. it's got a big, huge a history. history on it. It's crazy. So, if that board could talk, it uh, would have some crazy stories. Oh, it's amazing. Wow. And people it's a are, piece of art. Yeah. yeah. People are always trying to buy it from me. Piece of history. Yeah. When I first bought it, Steve Vai back in LA was a friend of mine, guitar player. You might have heard of it. He, uh, I was in Sedona when I wound up finding it. And uh, Kathy was like, found out through Facebook that I was going to get it. Because I find nothing out firsthand. <laughs> we always Facebook each other when she's in there. Anyway, so she's like especially the major life decisions she, i have to go to facebook she found out how much it was and she's like you better she was actually like crying she's like you better not buy that board i because it was up to me and some other guy trying to get it um this was years ago and i go you better hope we get that board it's gonna make us a lot of money and she's like yeah like that grand piano you bought that made us nothing like crap <laughs> like that so i go i go that's when we move not for sedona it's like you know so um I go, everybody thinks I should get it. She goes, yeah, of course. It's not their money. Of course. They're. So I equated, <laughs> it was a lot of money, so I won't say how much, but yeah. I had equated to her coming up to me and saying, hey, I'm going to spend X amount of money on Jimmy Choo handbags and shoes. They'd be like, no, you're not, because that's kind of how it would be to her, like a Neve, like, what, what the hell? You know? And Jimmy Choo isn't going to make you money. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like those shoes you wanted to buy. So <laughs> I don't buy Jimmy Choo. <laughs> uh, and then I had this idea. To, Clearly. So <laughs> anyway, so when I got it, it was in LA and Steve Vai said, how did you find this board out? Somebody had told me about it. Cause you, you know, you can't find them. They're just so rare. So he said, I'll give you a uh, X amount for it right now. I, and you don't have to do anything like what I paid for it. He said, you just stay in Sedona cause the boards in LA where he lives. He goes, I'll just have my guy pick it up and you don't have to do anything. I go, no, he goes, all right, I'll give you uh, like a hundred thousand bucks over what you paid for it. And I go, he goes, you just made a hundred grand for doing nothing. 
and I just pick it up and you don't have to, and he went up and I, I couldn't sell it. And just recently somebody offered me a lot of money for it. And I still, I just still can't, it's just too rare and amazing. You know, it's, oh, it's totally. incredible. Yeah. yeah. So once I, if I retire, I would probably even keep it, I think, cause I still kind of do music a little bit, but I, yeah. I don't know that I could ever sell it. Yeah. Well, that's an awesome story. So where can people find out about the studios? I know you're, you, yeah. you know, produce stuff, work with people. Yeah. So if someone's interested in checking out Latitude and talking to you about recording, where do they find you? Yeah. I have a website, Latitude Studio South, it's called, .com. And I spell Latitude with two T's, like my last name, like Latanzi. So it's L-A-T-T-I-T-U-D-E Studios South.com. Just studio. So Latitude Studio South.com with two T's and I'm on Facebook. If you put Mike Latanzi in, it'll pop up. And then also Latitude Studio will pop up in Instagram and Facebook. But tell them too that this board, Brian Adams had this board. Oh, cool. We love and Brian Stevie Adams. I love Brian Nicks Adams. Oh, yeah. had this tape machine. Yeah, that was Stevie yeah. Nicks so, machine. It really is. It's like a, it is like, it's like, a, it's it's like, like, like a museum in so here. So cool. It really is a museum in here. Yeah, so. it's, I can't even believe it's mine. Every day I come in here still, after 12 years, it's like you're thankful for it. Yeah, I don't even think yeah. it's my studio, and I don't ever look at it like, oh, I'm cool. Look at my studio. It's like I want to share it with people because it's too cool totally. to keep to yourself. And like I said, it's like I'm. I look at it like I'm just lucky to be in here, and it's not even mine. It's crazy. Love that. Well, you guys are the most down to earth. I mean, very people. I mean, yeah so incredible like you guys should actually have a your own tv show you guys are so funny. yeah you guys are really funny like, look who's the talking. video cameras yeah. could just like follow you guys around like I we, want, would, we would totally like sit there and watch i have a that question before we wrap it up yeah you go on ahead and ask okay it's not about the tv show i, I came up with a different question because this has been debated online recently and i want to get both of your opinion on it people have been talking about concert etiquette and there's all these videos have been going viral of people saying that when you go to a concert, there's some people that are like singing so loudly, like kind of what you're saying about the Beatles and like they're horrible singers and then they can't hear the person performing. So do you think people should have etiquette when they go to concerts or do you think they should be able to just freely express themselves being at that concert? What do you mean? Like being just being quiet till the performance? Yeah. What started? do you, yeah. What do you, what do you think? Isn't there like in Europe or somewhere, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's Japan or somewhere where they, uh, don't clap. They hold it till the end, and it's quiet for as they're performing. Right. Like I think that's weird. Yeah. Like I that think it, I think weird. it's weird to be completely silent. Yeah. But I did. I I talked to people at Trader Joe's about this, and one guy told me that he was at a concert with his mom, and um, a guy puked on his mom twice, <laughs> and he had to go find somebody to be like, take this guy the hell out of here, Bill. Yeah. He was like, take this guy out of here. He's puking on my mother. That would be. Annoying. I mean, there. And if you look at the comments from these posts, people have horror stories at these concerts yeah. i don't have a problem with the singing it's the puking and it's the rowdiness and it's you know they always bump into you and i think people should have fun though they and should express have fun themselves. i don't have yeah. a problem with people but singing just be aware that. of like your just little neighbor there like you're not don't annoying grow up them, on me. that's all i ask but i think even when uh, another good question that, that, that you brought that up that i was just thinking the other day when people play at like say puckets which is now Fox and Lock here are these places in Nashville or, you know, um, all, the, all, all, the, you know, that winery place, what's it called? Anyway, city winery, places like that. I, people are performing because it's a lot of acoustic stuff. And, and I feel bad for the, the person playing their heart out and their music. That's so special to them. And then oh, it's like you hear the clanking yeah. and all this. And it's, yeah. but the problem there is I'm thinking, people want to go out and enjoy themselves and talk. Like if we went out as couples and like, Hey, you know, and then that almost becomes annoying, unfortunately, because the guy's <laughs> singing, it's like, Oh, I wish it was lower. Cause they're trying to talk. So there should be some way to not, you can't vet people to like, if, the, you know, if you want to go to hear music, you should pay attention, you know, not be quiet, quiet, but it's just rude to the poor guy. Cause I saw a, a video clip somebody put up. I'm like, they're not even listening to this guy. It's that right. person who wants to record here with, wife you know what i'm saying oh, okay and he's playing and it's like it was like an award thing where he was playing and you just i saw him and all you heard was yeah chatter you know because yeah. it was just acoustic it's like all right you maybe be quiet and just like listen to him but so maybe that's but that gets boring too if because it's like, acoustic no talk i remember kathy we were at puckets when we first oh, moved i got here. shushed yeah a friend of mine <laughs> A friend of mine wrote some hits for Keith Urban, a matter of fact, had a couple of number ones and wrote some stuff and for uh, a 
American Ride. Joe West, his name is a really cool guy. And his wife, he was playing and Kathy was talking and she gave Kathy this look like, she goes, Shh. and you know, and it was kind of right probably because the poor guy's there and, but at the same time you're out. So what yeah. are you supposed to do? But well, that it, is kind of a, sti a yeah. sticky situation. But the concert, I would say, yeah. Well, yeah. and another thing too, that I think is a good point that I think needs to change is I don't, I don't like how everyone's at the concert and they're recording on their mm. phone the whole time and i'm like how i mean okay yeah you have a video then of this person like maybe get a couple clips i get but like having your phone out like the entire time filming something you're not living in the moment you know you're not living in the moment yeah. and like True. you're not really like yeah i that that i think is weird like i don't understand that yeah. i agree what do you think What's your opinion? Well, what's your opinion about this? No, I think you should be in the moment. Pete is a Tara. What's what's yeah. your <laughs> TJ should live in the moment? <laughs> TJ Satara. What do you think about concert etiquette though? I think it's difficult because these people live through these songs. So when that artist is singing on stage, they're relating to that song that resonates right. with them. Yeah. So they're I mean, half the time you can't even hear the artist because the whole crowd is singing. Right, yeah. right. But mm -hmm. they're I, I mean, think, they're I think they get energy that. off that though. At the same time, we, yeah. we love watching the Foo Fighters yeah. and those concerts. Just, I love when how they just stop and they just listen to the fans. I showed her the Wim, the Wimbley Stadium one where oh, the yeah, crowd, yeah. like eight, you know, however many eighty thousand people are just like singing. And, and it's, it's just, it's but you know what? But, cool yeah. but speaking of that, what I don't like is when the artist, and I know it because I'm in the business, when they get to the chorus and they have to belt. And they know they can't sing it, so they have the crowd do it. <laughs> yeah. And it well, happens yeah. all the time. Yeah, they say their voice because it's they like, don't dude, want to ruin their voice. If you can't and... sing it, you know, it's. Or they want to say their voice and not. Yeah. But the people that are hear that, it's like, don't. You save your voice for a concert and you better sing because these people are paying a lot of money. And then it's like, you know, you know, we're, we're living on a prayer. And like when you get to that part and the hand comes up and he's like pointing the thing, it's like, come on. You know, yeah. anyway, so. Well, it's been fun, guys. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, thanks for doing this with us. Thank I usually you. don't. Yes, yeah, I usually you. don't like doing this stuff. I hate it. And this <laughs> it was, was like fun. hanging out. You two should have a TV show. Speaking we, of TV uh, show, we told you we'd just be hanging out talking. You, you got to see chill. these two yeah. people if you haven't. You need to go on their Aww. on their personal pages, and they're they're like twins. They're crack up <laughs> in the so car <laughs> in the in the supermarket. <laughs> This one on the left does her little dance. It was the it uh, was the Kelsey with the TJ hands that had me cracking. Oh, yeah, that was fun. So funny story. Everyone thought those were my hands. So funny story. Yeah, I didn't see that. Hands. I didn't yeah. see so that. So funny story. We posted the video on Facebook first. Oh, I got to oh, yeah. see that. I didn't see that. Like immediately, my mom calls me and she was like, hey, uh, that video you just posted on Facebook? And I was like, yeah. She was like, Kelsey looks drunk. She can't yeah. even. Yeah. Grab, oh, I gotta see it. She I don't can't even grab the glass. <laughs> She's having problems having getting problems. it to she her thought, face. She <laughs> She's like, "Why would you post it?" And I was like, "Mom, I gotta see this. those are my hands. Like I'm behind Kelsey <laughs> trying to." She was yet. like, "Oh, never mind. Never mind." No, she said, "She said, oh, well, you might want to repost it and say oh, something yeah. about She's it." Oh yeah, she's like, "You might want to, you know, let people know that those are your hands." That's yeah. funny because my mom does the same thing with posts. You sure you want to put that? You think you should say this? Like before I see when it hits the press, she hits me back. Yeah. But wait, I have to see this. What is this? You got to show me this video. Yeah, I will. I will. But <laughs> Kelsey, if you don't know, she does these little dances oh, with this cutesy little face. Yeah, she's a dancer. And, yeah, and mm -hmm. and then he's driving in the car and. He doesn't know she's being video. He's being videotaped, and he's singing something, and he'll just glance over and be like, "Oh, what? I'm being videotaped," and then he'll start pointing his finger and turn on for the camera. You two, are, you need a one show. quick, quick, fast story. Yes, yeah. we got approached to do a um, reality a reality show. show. Why didn't you guys do it? It was back when Ozzy came out back then. Oh. The, the, I feel and, like everyone who does a reality show ends up divorced. So oh. I thought, mm, not so much. And so people think that we put. Yeah, they step think, on like we're like we're, we're acting, like, but acting. it's not. So one day, oh, the story with the wheelchair. Yeah, with the candle. So again, yeah, I had quick I had my cast peg on, leg, and and he's in the chair, and we're in Sedona, and we got in a fight. And let me tell the fight real quick, and then we'll wrap this fine, up. I know you guys. Fine. Kelsey wants to go. She's giving me Quickly, the wrap. No, 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 I'm not. I just want to make sure we don't run out. But we're good. We're good. We're real quick, we're in Sedona, and uh, she would push me in the chair because the floor wasn't really level, and I was irritated with her and she'd push me i go and i just roll a little bit and i go knock it off and she pushed me again i said really just not now just stop and she pushed me again and i go dude 
you got to stop. Dude. And she's like, she's like, no. And I said, so she's like a little kid. And she pushes me again. I go, you better knock it off. And you know, my Italian temper is starting to boil. And uh, she, she goes, no. And she pushed me again. I said, one more time. And that's going to be that. So she pushes me again. And I look at rage and I, she sees me. She starts running with her leg, hopping, hopping along. Leg and and the house is kind of big. So she's getting, and I go to pick up this candle and I wasn't going to hit her with it, but I was, pushed, I was like, yeah. And I threw it and it actually bounced and hit her in the knee or something, which I was like, oh, and she looks at me. So I start trying to wheel away. <laughs> And then she, I'm coming around the corner and she stuck her cane through my wheel to stop me. And then we, we bolted. And then we, I like, I'm wheeling to try to get her and then she just stopped me. She sticks her cane in the wheel. Stop him in his tracks. From her peg. So, so then we started laughing. And I was like, see, people think, people think we, we made this, this up. a good episode. Oh God, I'm like crying. And then the other thing with her, like, I'll, I'll say, you need to be quiet. I don't even want to hear a peep at it. She'll go, peep. And I go, look, I'm serious. Not, she goes, peep. I go one more time with the peep, and peep, she goes peep. Peep, 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 peep. And then the one time I smashed my guitar over there, one of my favorite guitars, because she did the peep thing, and I was like, and I just started sm like, because I don't want to hit anybody, so I started smashing this guitar right over there against there, and she's like, yeah, it's real smart breaking your own thing. It's really smart. So, I just walk out. So anyway, they wanted to give us a reality show back then, and we thought about it, and everybody that would visit us said the same thing, like, and they knew people with that, like. They could literally give us a show because they were in entertainment. Some of these people that we were friends with, and I don't know why we didn't, but well, there's, anyway. a, reason, there's a reason you probably did it. But you two need one anyway. I think I like I like watching, uh, just, you know, like, in all the lousy news and stuff that goes on a lot, and you know, watching you two just gives me a smile for real. Oh, it's like we really I, appreciate, appreciate that. for real, yeah, for real. Oh, man, that was making me cry. But hearing these <laughs> stories about Kathy, I, th I think there's some similarities between her and Kelsey. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cause oh, yeah. Uh, Kelsey does the same kind of stuff to me. Yeah. So no, he'll be downstairs doing can, the laundry and he's like doing the laundry. I'm like, what are you thinking about? And he's like, laundry like, what are you doing now laundry Still laundry. or I'll, I'll be changing like in the bedroom mm -hmm. like by the bed mm -hmm. and i'll be putting my pants on so i have one leg and she'll just come and push me like on the bed <laughs> and i'll fall over i love it not um yeah so random stuff like that is she the boss of you pretty much for do you she the boss of you snapper yeah snapper. i'm snapping right now it's been so fun you guys yeah. let's just let's cheers, cheers this cheers out, it out. Cheers, Cheers to Kathy and Michael. Cheers to you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelsey and TJ Satara. <laughs>